It is a splendid Thursday afternoon here from McCoy Stadium, and it's another edition of Red Sox Taxi Squad Baseball presented by Bank of America. Alongside my partners Josh Maurer and Mike Antonellis, I am Jim Kane. We thank you for tuning in here this afternoon, whether it's through Periscope on Twitter or on Facebook Live. We appreciate you making us part of your Thursday afternoon. Well, a bit of a shorter simulated game on the docket here today. Guys, we had a short one yesterday. We'll have another short one here today, but that is not the story. The big story today with the Red Sox is the addition of Tristan Costas to the 60-man player pool. He is here in Pawtucket. He will not play today, but Mike, I'll start with you. It's very exciting to see the top prospect, according to Baseball America, finally here and part of this player pool. Yeah, out of the top 100, he's ranked 75 in all of professional baseball. He is a player that has garnered a lot of attention for Red Sox Nation. And during these weird times, Tristan Casas ends up in Pawtucket, which he probably wouldn't have at all this year. And Josh, I think it's a great decision for a number of reasons. But I think the biggest reason why Casas is now here is because the Red Sox want to have him under their watch. They want to see him develop under their control in these crazy times and get some sort of development out of it. Well, I, I think, Jim, as we've talked about a lot during these sim game broadcasts, there are so many young players that are considered among the top tier of the prospects right now in the Red Sox organization that have not been able to get work in with coaches like we have here at the alternate training site. So with a guy like Casas and the power that he has, I know he's young, but they want to see him get some sort of development with actual games, actual instruction here in 2020, which he otherwise would not have been able to have. He's coming off his first full year of professional baseball, was the Red Sox first round pick, 26th overall out of high school in 2018. He's still only 20 years old. And he's the Red Sox reigning minor league offensive player of the year. We will not see him today, could see him tomorrow or perhaps Saturday. But the batter now digging into that left-hand box, Jaron Duran in a first pitch swing and a drive out to left field. It's a vacant left field, but Duran hits it out. First pitch swinging, Jaron Duran to the opposite field with a solo home run to kick off the ball game. Well, his game has really changed. We are seeing him hit some really long home runs, and that is unreal pop to left fields. What a way to start. Unbelievable. The very first pitch of the day thrown by Dylan Covey. And he goes oppo right onto that what would have been a flower bed under normal circumstances. Just barely got out, but it counts. Man, We've seen him in a couple of home runs, Jim, here this week. He's just so impressive to watch. He hit one to the pull side a couple days ago, now going the opposite way. Connor Wong, first pitch, swing and a miss. I think he's a guy to get excited about. If he can hit for power. I'll tell you, Mike, it's looking like that. Wow. That was not the book on Jaron Duran. Even coming here to the alternate training site, you wouldn't have thought you'd see the kind of pop that he has shown. But he made some swing changes during the offseason that have really paid off. Mike, I try to keep track of the day-to-day -day numbers, but I know you do a better job than I do. By my count, I think that's Duran's fourth home run that he's hit during the simulated games that we have called. Could be wrong. Right. Yep. But he had one yesterday, right? Uh, two days ago. Two, yeah, day, yep. two days ago. That was the one that he pulled out like a frozen rope to right field. The one off the warehouse. Remember, that was 429. He said one into the bleachers in right center, too. You're right, four. So there's four. Power to all fields during these sim games for Jaron Duran. So you would say that unofficially ties him for the league lead with Marco Hernandez? <laughs> I'm checking the other sites to see their leaders. <laughs> <laughs> Although Marco, I think, just hit his fifth the other day. He's one behind Marco. Hernandez and Duran homered in the same game yep. Tuesday afternoon. Not the start you wanted for Dylan Covey as he's fallen behind here of Connor Wong. Covey set to go three innings today, although... We saw that that can even change. Yesterday it did as Robert Stock started, and he went two innings, was only supposed to go the lone inning. Kobe optioned back here to the alternate site on Sunday to make room on the big league roster for Chris Mazza as Wong rolls one over, and they are going to rule him out. Good call. 
Yeah. <laughs> We're becoming better at this, too. Hey, if they had a third baseman, no problem. What a ringing start to the afternoon here, though. You know who used to do that all the time? Ambush first pitches for home runs? Ricky Henderson. Oh, yeah. Of course, the new leadoff man that hits home runs feels like every day is Mookie Betts. I'm not trying to put Jaron Duran in the category of Ricky Henderson and Mookie Betts. I'm just saying. Those are guys that would lead off the game with a home run all the time. Munoz first pitch swinging, and he pops it right side. Marco Hernandez will make the catch. You talk about a true five-tool player, Ricky Henderson. There wasn't many in those days. You didn't have leadoff guys hitting for power like that. No, and you think about Ricky, you think of his stolen base abilities, the all-time leader, but he did. He had sneaky power. So after the leadoff home run for Duran, a grounder to third by Wong, a pop out by Munoz, and now Josh Akami to bat against Covey. He first pitch swings and lifts it foul out of play. You know, going back to the young guys we were talking about at the opening, obviously there's no season, but there's probably no fall league, which those young prospects go to, no instructional league. So this kind of marriages that the both of those here in Pawtucket. Up and in on Akami. Kass, oh, sorry, Josh. Costas was here today, and he took batting practice, and he fielded grounders at third. He has spent the majority of his young professional career at first base, but the Red Sox moving him across the diamond to third. Swing and a miss. Good pitch there from Covey. That bottom just dropped out of it. I think that's good, too, Jim, to get his feet wet. Let him do the early work before they put him in any of these sim games. And, again, it's kind of like a situation where we've talked about Jay Groom having hardly ever faced the level of competition that he sees here with these advanced minor league and some major league veterans. It's going to be the same thing for Mr. Casas. He's only been an A ball. Akami into the gap in left center field. This ball with some carry to it, and it hits off the base of the wall. Bruce Crabb throws two fingers up to signal a double for Josh Akami. So a pair of left-handers here in this first inning going to the opposite field with some authority. That one really jumped off his bat. Didn't that sound good? Didn't oh, yeah. Man, did he square that baby up? That's when a Akami, thing of beauty for lefties. When Akami connects, Mike, they go a long way. He's had some good swings this week. He's ripped a couple line drives to right. And you can tell he's really locked in when he hits for power the opposite way. On Centeno now, the batter. We were talking about Ricky Henderson being the Major League's all-time stolen base leader. Can you name the top three? So who's number two and who's number three? Tim Raines. Good no. guess. Incorrect, however. Oh. Raines is number five of oh, the all-time Vince, Vince Coleman's in there. No. No, Juan Pierre. Nah. Vince Coleman is number six, so he is just behind Tim Raines. You're missing number three and number four. I feel like no one runs anymore like they used to. Well, there is one on this list. It's probably an obvious. It's It shocked me, and that's why I asked you guys this trivia question. You've got me stumped. How about Billy Hamilton? It's number three. Wow. No kidding. Already. Wow. 914 steals. Wow. And you talk about stolen bases. That's really a lost art in the game today. Number four would be the great Ty Cobb. Mm. But you're right, Jim. You don't see it as much. Now it's just all about hitting the ball out of the ballpark. You don't manufacture runs anymore, right? Santeno swings and doesn't get a slider in the dirt for strike three. So Covey ends up striking out Santeno to end the inning, but some loud contact to greet him. First pitch swinging, Jaron Duran with an opposite field shot. Akami followed that up three batters later with an opposite field double. So through a half an inning, 
It's one nothing. Top half sucks, and now the bottom half sucks. We'll come to bat. But first, a word from our presenting sponsor of these broadcasts, day in and day out, Bank of America. We are entering a new chapter in our lives. Our confidence is shaken, cracked. We didn't ask for it, but we are rising to meet it. And how far we've come isn't even close to how far we can go. There's a crack in everything for a reason. How else can the light get in? Tomorrow starts today. Sim City here at McCoy. Another edition of Red Sox Taxi Squad Baseball. Jim Kane, Josh Maurer, Mike Antonellis. We're through a half an inning. We're scheduled to go about two and a half innings today. And you see the new pitcher coming on there. Robinson Lair will take the mound, and he will pitch this bottom half of the frame. Hard throwing, slender right-hander. Mike got to see him last year a little bit in AA Portland when he was signed in the middle of the year by the Red Sox. Mike, I know you talk about how that arm, it plays at any level. It's just a question of the secondary stuff and location. Yeah, he had a really tough time with some other organizations. Paul Abbott is terrific, scheduled to be the Pawtucket pitching coaches here, is really good with working with mechanics. And uh, yeah, sometimes you see the radar readings, you see 98, and you're just blown away because he's wiry. But we know it's not always that. Jim, you don't have to be the big, strong guy to throw 98. And he can bring it, though. He certainly can. He, he reminds me a lot of Phillips Valdez. Yes. A guy who's coming out of the Red Sox bullpen, has that wiry frame, but can still sling it and get the velocity up there. So he split last season between the Red Sox and Mariners organizations. 26-year-old right-hander. Pitch this bottom half of the frame. Red Sox yesterday snapping their nine-game losing streak, and they did it against the Phillies at Fenway Park. Six to three the final yesterday, and Kyle Hart's second big league start. And as I know, they were playing at the same time as us, but going back and watching some of the highlights, another tough start for Kyle yesterday, giving up a couple of runs. But after that, I thought he settled in pretty nicely, and he got some swings and misses, which is not usually part of his game. Absolutely. It's easy to look at the box score and say he was bad because he went three and two-thirds. He admitted after it's not what he wanted, but he didn't wreck the game. That game could have been over in the first. They had bases loaded, nobody out. Philly score four or five runs, the game's over probably. Kyle said he took a moment in the dugout after that yeah. first inning to kind of collect himself and say, all right, let me just make this a five-inning game. Now, he didn't quite make it through five himself, but he certainly shored up the dam enough for the offense to get him right back into it and eventually win the game. Big series starts tonight. How about that with Baltimore? Who would have thought? Big series for Baltimore. Oh. Well, I mean, they want to improve, <laughs> right? You're right, though. You're right. Johnny Parada, the first man to hit against Lair. Parada hasn't been here the last few days. He was the Red Sox selection to be their taxi squad guy up at Fenway. But now with the team on the road, he is back playing in these simulated games. You think Johnny feels like he got shorted a little bit, Jim, because it was only a two-game series he got to be there for? Hey, you got to think, right? That's, That's strike two. Pitch. What a fastball. Perfect location. You can see that big arm on display there from Lair. So the Red Sox with their seventh win yesterday will start the first of four against the Orioles at Camden Yards. Nathan Avaldi will take the ball. And Ron Ranicki in his weekly radio appearance on WEI today broke a little bit of news. They were TBD with the starter for tomorrow, but it looks like if everything goes according to plan, Colton Brewer will be the opener. And in a roster move made today, Darwinson Hernandez was activated as Pareda bounces that one back through the box. And Renicki said that the plan, if Avaldi can give them what he's usually capable of, Hernandez will follow him. If not, 
and you could see him tomorrow, but it looks like Darwinson's going to figure into this rotation pretty early. Yeah, they want to just have him throw two innings because the pitches throwing uh, throw in the big leagues are a lot more pressure pitches than they are down here. So it should be a fun series. I mean, the Red Sox, if they can sweep Baltimore, they're, they're, that's who they're behind now. Well, yeah. They really have to, right? They have to. I mean, they have to go on a ridiculous little stretch here. Jeter Downs takes strike one. You know, I was thinking, Mike, the old saying, Rome was not built in a day. <laughs> right? you got to take it brick by brick. <laughs> they lose nine in a row. Let's see if they can finally win two straight. But what, yeah, but with the short season, right? They Yeah, you're right. You're running out of time. Yeah. And against a divisional opponent, as you have talked about before, Mike, as that one's in the dirt, chance to gain ground immediately you know, against the, the teams that are ahead of you. Downs, much like Josh Yakimi, has turned it around at the dish. He's had some good swings this week. Had a ringing single up the middle a couple days ago. Starting to look more comfortable. He swings through a high fastball here, though. I have a feeling we'll see a lot of runs in that series. Just a hunch in that ballpark. Isn't it always that way when the Red Sox go to Camden Yards? It feels like the ball flies out of the ballpark. Mookie Betts, when he was with Boston, used to hit a home run or two. Every game he played at Camden Yards, it felt like. It's like you're rubbing salt in the wound over there, yeah, Josh. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's my second Mookie reference in about five minutes. Big cut and a miss for strike three. And nothing but fastballs there from Robinson lay air. And downs late on all of them. Yeah, I think the difference in the first inning between the pitchers, Kobe, his fastball was for strikes, but... Just up in the zone. Layers getting it past these guys. So one out, one on. And here's Cesar Pueyo. Back to the traditional walk-ups for these guys after we had a little bit of fun with it yesterday where Billy McMillan, the manager here at this alternate site, wanted a little bit of a mix-up when it came to the walk-ups. We had a wide variety of songs played and it amused some guys. Some guys probably didn't take it the, <laughs> the way that they wanted it, but things back to normal today. It was like dealer's choice in the press box. <laughs> There's strike two in at the knees. We were hoping that they'll do that again. The it was select. a lot of fun for us. Yeah, we were, and we were hoping to get the viewers involved. I mean, it's a good idea. This one's blooped down the line, and it drops in for a base hit. Nobody out there in right, so Pueyo's going to keep on going to second base. But now Bruce Crabb, in a motion like he wanted him to go back. Foul ball, Jim. Yeah, they're letting the catcher decide. They saw Crabby pointed to the catcher. It said six inches foul. That's pretty good eyes, huh? It's a game of inches, huh? Somebody got out the ruler. It's hard, though, without the chalk, isn't it? Yeah. You can see there the field looks gorgeous, as always, at McCoy. Matt McKinnon and his crew have done a fantastic job, but they don't paint the chalk lines every day for these sim games. I like that Matt's a big Guns N' Roses fan. That's I, I am, too. So Every time we leave, that's what we hear. <laughs> He gets, he gets a whole soundtrack. He deserves it. He sure does. Does a great job along with Alex Tedesco day in and day out getting this field ready for these guys. As Poyo waves through a slider. So how about that? Thinking he had a base hit down the line, then he comes back and strikes out on the next pitch. Yeah, if you're a reliever and you can command that fastball but that slider, that will make Lair very good. Boy, Ron Renicki did not shy away about there needs to be something to speed the game up. And if you guys could hear the conversation, I mean, he was very vocal about it and said that they have to do something, that it's getting out of hand. And he even said we're playing long games too. Yeah, they really are. Inside, snap throw to first, but runner is back safely. And they're nine inning games, too. It's not like yeah. these are extra inning games. That's the thing. Even yesterday, that game didn't have a ton of offense, and it still lasted over three and a half hours. That's the problem, I think. 
We've seen 2-1 games take 3-30. I mean, that, that shouldn't happen. One on, two out. And Centeno takes one away. Snapping off some pretty good sliders, though, here in his inning is Robinson Lair. You, ju you just said it, Mike. I alluded to it when he was coming to the mound. If he has that secondary pitch, that makes the fastball all that much more effective. And that fastball touching 97, according to our own Tim Cordadamo, who's uh, operating the track man today. That one dips a bit low. So pretty good velocity from Robinson Lair. That's ripped right to Akami. Oh, you couldn't hit it any harder than Juan Centeno just did. But Akami played him perfectly, stuck the glove out, made the catch. Some Look what I found. Yeah, some loud sounds here early. It's really amazing where that ball was hit, it, right when he came off the back. And look at this, they are changing innings. But as you can see on your screen, Akami never moved. He's just staying out there at first base. Yes. He'll wait for the new pitcher and say, come join me. That is the beauty of the simulated games. And as you see there, Dylan Covey back out for inning number two of three today. Now, there were only two pitchers on the docket for today, both Lair and Covey. But we got word up here in the press box, RJ Alvarez could see an inning today. So we'll see whether or not that does end up happening. I think it's looking probable, Jim, as I look down at the bullpen and see him warming up. There he is. You can't miss him. You don't need the binoculars because you just have to look at the hair. Yep. And in our job, after, I think three weeks, you start to know everyone throwing by certain ways. Yeah. Mechanics, but you can tell by the, the hair. So I could tell when I walked in who was in the director's chair. I could tell by the hair. <laughs> Good moss. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've got – I normally have the, the shorter hair of – whoever I'm working in a broadcast booth with, but in the three-man triumvirate that we have, I have the longest hair you do, of yep. the three of us. So while we have a little downtime here, can we address the Caitlin Olsen situation? Oh, definitely. With Dan Fontaine, our cameraman. We should get Dan on camera. I'll let Josh tell the story because he heard it firsthand. I, I heard the story from Josh, so why don't you go ahead? If you're aware of the, sh the show, It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, or The Mick is a great actress. She's hilarious. Caitlin Olsen. She plays D, Sweet D, and It's Always Sunny. And her last name is Olsen. And Dan Fontaine was talking about how much he loved that show and then talked about how it's great that the Olsen twins have found some work after their full house days. <laughs> <laughs> Try again. It's all right, Dan. We all make mistakes. I like how, Jim, you're calling Dan out on it, though. Well, you were the one that said we need to address that at some point. So I figured I'd bring it up. Call a spade a spade. Great. If we need help tomorrow now, we're <laughs> dining on the diamonds. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Those yeah. toast machines are going to fix themselves. Arco Hernandez takes strike one. Marco has been swinging it really well this week. Saw the home run Tuesday. A lot of hard contacts. Always intense in that box. You yeah. might not even know Full House, Jim. Are you too young oh, for I'm Full a House? Oh, I'm a big Full House guy. <laughs> they used to run or air the reruns every day after school, get out of school at 2.30, and they'd have an hour from 3 to 4 o'clock, half-hour episodes on the old ABC family, which is now free for them. Uh, Watched it every day. Uh, all right. I'm all caught up. Can't say I'm caught up on Fuller House, the Netflix new show, but and they're remaking Saved by the Bell, right? They or, are, or, or they're just continuing it. Right? I think they're, I think they're redoing it. Yeah, I've never seen Mario Saved Lopez by the Bell, is like, I think he's the principal at a school. Ah. Took Mr. Belding's job. Yes. Wow. 
Ooh. Inside. Well, Full House came out when I was probably 13 or 14, so I was not watching it. Mike was too busy watching Perfect Strangers. <laughs> but Lori Laughlin was in that show, so. She's probably not in the new show anymore, right? I don't think so. <laughs> Otherwise <laughs> occupied. Yes. <laughs> That's ball wow. four to Hernandez. Just missed the corner. You see how upset Dylan Covey was at a couple of those calls by umpire slash coach Bruce Crabb? It's about as quizzical of a look that we've had from a pitcher back to Krabby. I know. That's the weird thing about the umpire being right behind you on the mounds. I think Krabby gets it, though, right? Totally. He's got pretty thick skin, too. Bobby Dahlbeck bats for the first time and fouls it straight back. Dahlbeck hit a home run here a little over a week ago down the right field line, showing off his opposite field power. It's interesting reading the, the scouting reports and, and some of the stories on Tristan Casas. I see a lot of similarities to the guy at the plate right now. As he goes the other way and drops one in the right field, a base hit. Hernandez touches second, heads to third. Dahlbeck will glide into second base. Well, he's doing that a lot, going the other way. That, that's it's beautiful to watch. Going to have to use a ghost runner at third base. You can see Marco vacating the premises there, but you're right, Mike. If Dahlbeck uses all fields, that makes him that much more dangerous of a guy to pitch to. Yeah, and it, it allows him to get more pitches where he wants them to pull. So now it's Jonathan Lucroy. These catchers have gotten plenty of at-bats, especially over the last week or so as Lucroy takes a strike. Luke Roy, 34 years of age, former two-time All-Star. Led the big leagues in doubles in 2014 with the Milwaukee Brewers. He's been a valuable commodity here at this alternate workout site as he bounces this one left side, glove by Downs. Gonna throw in plenty of time. Or do we give him credit for an RBI? I was just gonna say, Mike, yeah. should they have thrown home? <laughs> <laughs> I think they had a play on the ghost runner. <laughs> Marco had a good read. Situational hitting there. Nice job by Jonathan Lucroy. Get a man in, get a man over. And we'll have another ghost runner. There goes Bobby. So I'm assuming that Jet Bandy is on the taxi squad, right? Because we don't see him. Through process of elimination, <laughs> I would assume you're pretty, correct. Pretty good, huh? <laughs> Boy, we're getting good at this. Nothing gets past you, huh? <laughs> Nothing. So Hernandez bats again. Strike one over the inside edge. So they are playing this as if there were a runner on third. The infield is in. The three infielders that are out there. And there's nobody on base. <laughs> How often do you see that alignment? Infield in, no base runners. This one's hit out to left, and let's see what they'll call it. I think they're calling it a base hit. I'm calling it a base hit, right? You were all over that. It has to be. I think so, too. Bruce Crabb agreed. RBI single that time. Actually, it was a pretty good pitch, too. Well, how about the opposite field hitting, not only in this inning, but in this game, guys? First yeah. Duran, then Akami, and that first inning, and now Dahlbeck and Hernandez. Every single hit, Jim. Marco on base twice already in this second inning. This one skips away, and Hernandez up to second. And then Johnny Paredes single up the middle against Lair. So you've got some really good swings here today, and it kind of sticks to the theme that we've been talking about over the last few days. It seems like the bats are finally starting to catch up to the arms, and Mike, I know you said it yesterday or perhaps even the day before, 
it's almost like spring training again for these guys where they're getting these live at bats and now they're really starting to settle in yeah you can tell the at bats are quality at bats even the outs but guys go into all fields and i just love how these guys are playing here during these taxi squad games a lot of intensity there's a breaking ball that misses away they moved hernandez back to first Well, one of the orders of business recently has been having the pitching and catchers doing the work to hold base runners. I think they wanted to have Marco at first base. Swing and a miss. A lot of movement on that fastball from Kobe. Yeah, one of his best. Now that's behind. I think Dahlbeck is asking a catcher there, Pareda. What in the world was that? So with Dahlbeck up again, it... Brings me back to my point in his first at bat. You see a lot of similarities with the soft hands, the strong arm between both he and Casas playing both corner positions in the infield. And of course the power too. So the Red Sox have a surplus of guys who can play both first and third base. You also have to take into consideration Michael Chavis who's already up at the big league level. So seems like they're set for quite a a bit if you would think about it at first and at third yeah and obviously if they feel all these guys can play in the big leagues they'll move one of the outfields and you could have a murderer's row of power hitters up there this one's popped up right side into that bermuda triangle of sorts but Pueyo camps underneath it makes the catch who do you think spent more time in right field over the last oh let's say 16 months at McCoy. Cesar Pueyo or Rusne Castillo? <laughs> well, Pueyo is giving him a run for his money, huh? Dan saying he has spent more time in right field. Oh, that's a good one, Dan. All of us, really. Yeah, yeah that's Because that's where we have our tables now for dining on the diamond. That's a terrific point. I think you've made up for uh, the Kate Olsen comment. Very good. Two down, and Lucroy takes a bender for a strike. I thought we were dragging that out another month, no? <laughs> I'm going to go home and binge watch It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia tonight in Dan's honor. <laughs> Lucroy batting for the second time in this inning. It's been the same three guys, Marco, Dahl back in. Now Lucroy again as Covey checks on Hernandez. I just pulling up Jaron Duran's stats. I was curious. He only hit five home runs last year in the minors. Wow. He hit four in double A. Check that one in double A. I always say grow as a hitter, higher levels, see better pitching. I mean, I think that is a perfect example of calling up a guy who wouldn't have started the season in a regular season at the triple A level, I would assume, and I think you guys would agree. But being here and under the watchful eye of these, we'll call them Red Sox coaches because that's what they are here in 2020. Yeah. I mean, it's done him, you know, a world of wonders, really. And the results prove it. That's a strike. Well, then you ask, maybe some would say, what's the point of getting Tristan Cassis here? That, get him here. Exactly. Get some work, yeah, absolutely. development time. Yeah. 100%. Can't lose a whole year. That'd be tough. And that's what so many minor league guys are having to do, unfortunately, this year. It's really sad. Yep. It is sad. And I also think being their first-round pick and their reigning offensive minor league player of the year has to have something to do with it. As there's a ball in the door. Lucroy, or check that Pareto with a throw to first. The other thing that Jaron Duran did, as I alluded to when he hit the home run, he made a swing change. Yeah. And yeah. obviously that has given him – the impetus to hit for a lot more power, Mike. And you saw him last year with the old swing. The hands weren't where they are now. They're, they're further down. He's generating a lot of power, though. And we've talked about this, too. He's big and strong. He is big. Which people don't realize in that uniform. Runner goes. Bounce foul. Look out, Mario Oliveira. Yeah. I was wondering when Marco was going to go. You know, you mentioned after that wild pitch that should have been, they sent him back. Figured that was at some point going to lead to him taking off. I think you would call that meandering back to first base. And just to wrap up on Duran, as I was walking in, Tristan Casas was taking BP in the final group of hitters. 
And he's a big kid. He's 6'4", 240. And this is a credit to Duran's strength. I, I mistook Costas for Duran because Duran's just added so much strength. Yeah, and if you see Casas for his age, it's crazy. But those guys that look like that usually go high in the drafts. As yes, he did back in 2018, 26th overall selection. How about Casey Mize last night? Speaking of a top prospect that everyone knew of in his big league debut, he threw well. Seven strikeouts, right, Mike? Yes, no walks, which is impressive. Marco off again. And that is low and away. I don't think Pereira had a chance anyway, but when he dropped the ball in the transfer there, that cost him any chance of even making a throw. And Marco Hernandez is playing really well this week, guys, isn't he? Doing a bit of it all. Becomes a leader, too. When you see Hernandez and Luke Corey playing the way they are here, it really it rubs off to everybody. It's a really long half inning that they've allowed Dylan Covey to go through. Check swing, and it looks like they will end the inning. <laughs> they allowed it to go until that <laughs> walk off walk. Lucroy was about to take off the shin guard, but instead got word that that was it. So a long inning, to your point, Josh, for Dylan Covey. Some good swings off of him, though, from Dahlbeck, from Marco Hernandez. And we are through an inning and a half here at McCoy. So we talk about the Red Sox, and we talk about the youth movement here. That's really been the theme over the last few years across Major League Baseball, but especially so here in 2020. As you see R.J. Alvarez coming on to pitch this next half inning. How about Fernando Tatis Jr.? He's got to be the story in Major League Baseball now, guys. He is tearing it up for the San Diego Padres. And Tatis Jr. leads Major League Baseball in home runs, RBIs, runs scored, and stolen bases. Yeah, and I really, uh, many might not agree, and that's fine. The Machado move for them was good for this reason. They had a lot of young players. You bring in someone like that that's a veteran, you know Machado has been a guy he can lean on. They knew they had a superstar, and uh, he comes from a good background. His dad was, uh, Tatis' dad was a pretty good hitter. But, you know, we always hear that Major League Baseball sometimes maybe doesn't market their stars, but I feel like everyone knows who Fernando Tatis is, right? I wouldn't go that far. You don't think so? I think the controversy of this week that he's been involved in has gone a longer way towards having him become well-known than any of his accolades, I mean, for, base for baseball people, though. Well... I don't know. How many games did you watch Tatis Jr. play last year as a rookie? Well, I didn't watch, but I knew who he was. All right. Yeah. I mean, to, to say you don't know who he is if you're a baseball player. That, that, that's probably true. Yeah. And the other thing is, out in San Diego, you do tend to get lost. The general fan might not know. I That I agree. But I will say, if you were reading his league-leading accolades, Jim. He also leads the league in controversy, probably. He does. <laughs> Which, for baseball at this point... Is it necessarily a bad thing? But he is tearing it up for the San Diego Padres. And now RJ Alvarez will become the third pitcher here in this simulated game. Alvarez, you see the long moss, as Dennis Eckersley and Josh Maurer like to call it, flowing from underneath the navy blue cap. I'm just flat out stealing that from it. <laughs> Grand Theft Larceny. The FAU product. He's pitched a number of times here in these simulated games. Hard throwing right-hander as well. He'll sit in the mid-90s with that fastball, but I guess really who doesn't these days? Yeah. So Centeno's going to hit again. He hit that screamer to Akami that ended the bottom of the first. Dan Fontaine just texted and said, I'm with Josh, and I think that's in reference to Fernando Tatis Jr., Leading the league in controversy. Yeah. You know, you could be with me on a lot of things, guys. It's, a, it's okay. <laughs> First pitch swinging is Centeno, and he lifts it to center. Duran back pedaling to make the grab. 
Great shot there from Dan Fontaine operating the high home camera on a gorgeous Thursday afternoon. Some hard contact from Juan Santeno here the last couple of innings. Just nothing to show for it as yet. I like this guy, Yairo Munoz. Look at that bat flip. Look at the way that he just makes his presence felt in the batter's box. You always know when Yairo's coming in. Yairo, Fun to watch. Yeah, he's batting for the second time today. He goes after the first pitch and drives it out to right center. Pueyo is back onto the track, and that ball's gone. Look at the bat flip, too, yeah. for Munoz. Opposite field power on display in these hitters here today. Look at him run the bases. <laughs> I told you he's got flair. First he went into the horse trot, and now he's going with the fake sprint. <laughs> That was a lot of fun. That was more than a poke, too. He and absolutely crushed that ball. And the ball. sound off the bat. And another opposite field hit. Can I say it again as I continue to beat the Yairo Munoz drum? He can help a big league team. Now Johnny Pareda takes the first pitch strike. And he has last two years with the Cardinals as that utility guy. So we'll see if he gets a chance to do that with the Red Sox. Pareda had a nice at bat his first time. And he bounces this one to short. And Downs throws him out. Now Josh, what I was going to say too, if you played MLB The Show like I do, you would have known you'll know everybody in the game to all the minor league players that's right so we need so to get you, you knew Tatis <laughs> because he was one of the highest rated virtual players i think i knew him because of his dad that shows my age remember what fernando senior was most famous for he hit two grand slams one in inning, one yeah. inning that's a major league record you wouldn't think that one's ever going to be broken, or at least not anytime soon, but oh, who the, knows? The odds of it, you coming to bat twice when the base is loaded in one inning. Josh Akami, first pitch swing and a miss. Akami has had one of the good swings today. There have been a lot of good swings. At an opposite field double to hit off the base of the wall in left center, off the Honda advertisement on the fence. There's that over shift that Akami always sees. The numbers on the home run for Munoz left the bat at 101 miles an hour and it traveled 393 feet. Bats coming alive this week. That's where it ended up, Jim. Dan found it. Swing and a miss. Swung over the top of a slider. And Akami down on strikes. So they'll give him one more out, it looks like. You know, I think that ball has been there for a couple days. I was just thinking that. It didn't go that far, no. did it? No. There have been a couple out there. Dan was trying to fool us. He's unreal. Look, yeah, he's, he loves it. He's got a sheepish grin. Uh, taxi squad humor. Jonathan Lucroy to bat here against Alvarez. And he takes strike one. Lucroy is batting for the third time today. He has grounded to short. And his plate appearance ended the last half inning for Dylan Covey. Fouled off the catcher. Mm. Connor Wong behind the dish. He appears to be all right. I'm always amazed when those guys are able to handle those foul balls off the equipment that easily. I mean, that has to jar you. Yeah. It's coming yeah. at you over 100 miles an hour right off your mask. I was just going to say that. The velocity coming off the bat. Inspecting it, making sure there's no breaks. I don't know about you guys, but no thank you for me. No. Absolutely not. Nope. 
This one is sliced right to Dahlbeck. Carved him up. And that'll be the final batter that Alvarez faces here in this half inning. So we are through two full here at McCoy. And now a word from our presenting partner, Bank of America. We are entering a new chapter in our lives. Our confidence is shaken, cracked. We didn't ask for it, but we are rising to meet it. And how far we've come isn't even close to how far we can go. There's a crack in everything for a reason. How else can the light get in? Tomorrow starts today. Well, here's a view from the booths here up in the press box at McCoy Stadium. Jim Kane, there's Mike Antonellis and Josh Maurer directing once again today. The one-armed director. Yeah. <laughs> the one-armed director himself. How are you feeling, by the way, Josh? Yeah. I'm hanging in there. Hanging I, got in my, I got my adrenaline going to get the, through the broadcast here today. You know, it was a struggle for you to put your headset on. You thought you needed my help to do it, but you ended up doing it by yourself. You did say that it may be a struggle to get it off when we're done, but we'll see. That's amazing in just under 24 hours how much I've come to appreciate the ability to have two hands. <laughs> we take it for granted, gentlemen. No no doubts. We sure do. Well, like you, we talked earlier, it could have been a lot worse. Could have been. Yeah. yeah, I'm lucky. So we're worried about you. Glad you're here today. Wouldn't have missed it. And Dan volunteered to take your headset off, right? After? No? Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> now, if somebody can help me get the toothpaste out of the <laughs> tub and onto my <laughs> toothbrush tonight, I would be appreciated. See, if it was built in your toothbrush, you'd be <laughs> <sort of> right. <laughs> uh, So this should be the last half inning we play today. Dylan Covey set to go with these three. This is his final frame. Lair and Alvarez have each thrown an inning. Jeter Downs to lead it off. Downs struck out swinging in his last and only plate appearance so far. On a high fastball from Lair. Beautiful sky. You get these at McCoy on these late afternoons with the puffy white clouds. It's great weather too. Low humidity. And they usually turn into beautiful sunsets. Hoping to have some this weekend when we resume our dining on the diamond tomorrow night and Saturday night. Now, Jim, are you on both nights? I'm not. I'm here tomorrow, long day tomorrow, but off Saturday night. He's gonna eat the wedding cake leftovers. <laughs> Those are all gone by Sunday. Aren't you supposed to put it in the freezer for a year? Yeah, it's is that what it is? It's yeah. a big event. A yeah. year after your nuptials, then you have to go back and eat the frozen part of the wedding cake that you saved. Ah, okay. Tell your sister. Downs with a jam shot pop up in a shallow left that Bruce Crabb will rule him out on. You know what, though? You see there, even in just a little soft fly ball. See how quick the hands are for Jeter Downs? Pretty impressive how quickly he's able to whip that bat through the zone. Yep, and those are things that, those are tools that not everyone can possess. You, you, those kind of hands, that's what they say about Mookie. They said it about Hank Aaron. That was his big thing. And for a guy of his stature, that's primarily what allows him to generate the power that he does to drive those hands quickly through the zone. Now Connor Wong. There's a breaking ball that's in for a strike. So how about this? The two primary pieces from the Mookie Betts trade batting back-to-back -back here in this inning. Wong has had a good week, too. He's thrown out a few base runners behind the plate. Shown some power, had an opposite field double a few days ago. 
And it's weird for these catchers because sometimes they're gone. Yep. And I'm sure, I don't know if they take batting practice in the big leagues. Maybe they do. But they're still not facing this caliber. Well, I can tell you what they do do a lot of when they're up there, Mike. I'm, <laughs> I'm certain they're catching a lot oh, of yeah. pens. <laughs> That's why you're there. Yep, they're there for a reason. Swing and a miss. Another good fastball from Covey. He's featured a couple of those two seamers that ride down and into right-handers. Yeah, it's, it's like a great old-fashioned heavy sinker. Tough to make contact with. And he's gotten several swing throughs. He threw a really good one to Bobby Dahlbeck, who swung over the top of it, and now one here to Wong. Tap foul. Speaking of sinkers, Ryan Weber has straightened some things out up in the big leagues recently since he was called back up here from the, this taxi squad. Good to see for Weber, who was a guy who pitched here last year with the Pawtucket Red Sox. And his numbers are interesting when you look at him in a relief role versus a starting role. Now you also have to wonder, too, how many of those relief roles have come in mop-up duty. But nonetheless, he is getting results. And good to see for Ryan Weber. That one is just outside. He's made a few of those pitches that these hitters have taken. Breaking balls. Luke Corey took one that ended the second. You, know, you thought this might be a swing early, swing often kind of day when Duran homered on the very first pitch. But ever since, he's seen a lot of patience. Long at bats. Card foul back to the screen. Ron Rennick, he said that they they think Kyle Hart will get another start. They didn't want to commit to that. That they plan 10 days at a time, so we'll see. I know it's it's been hard for them to plan. He said that those 10 days when they plan, they haven't really been able to follow through on those 10 days. I'm interested to see how Darwinson Hernandez fares when he gets into his first game up in the big leagues this season. We've seen him pitch so much down here with a little bit, I, I would say, guys, mixed results. Swing and a miss. Another sinker from Covey. This one induces a strikeout of Connor Wong. Well, Covey, I think we've seen some good results here. Yeah, two innings I think is good for Darwinson to start. I mean, he really wasn't stretched out here yet. No, they had him go out for three innings, at least get hot three times in his last appearance over the weekend. But I think he only faced two batters in his third inning out there, if I remember correctly. So, yeah, he's not stretched out. Not fully. Cuello takes away. Uh, some bad news in big league baseball. The Mets have a COVID case, so their game tonight's been postponed mm. with the Marlins. I think the Marlins are sitting there thinking, are you kidding me? Not again. Mm. That could wipe out that series, right, as we yeah. know. Josh Akami, the first base umpire, they checked down with him, and he said no swing. <laughs> it's interesting how it's changed, though, because that very first week when Major League Baseball started, Juan Soto tested positive, but the Nationals played on opening night. Marlins had Alfaro test positive, and then they played three games. Now all of a sudden you get one positive test, and everything's shut down before you can do more testing. And I think the idea of a playoff bubble just – becomes a better idea by the day. Yeah, I just, it, they would be crazy to keep it the way it is mm. now and not have a bubble. I completely Can't agree. Have, if, then well, how would you do the playoffs? If a team tested positive, what would you do? You just stop the playoffs? You'd, well, you'd have to, right? You'd almost have to either put a pause in it or you'd say, sorry. You're out? You guys are out. Yeah, that's true. That's, yeah. San Diego appears to be one of the leading candidates. I think everybody would be pretty happy to spend part of their October out in San Diego. They no could do it here. No question. <laughs> Here's a strike that clips the corner. Now, Mike, this is Sim City. This uh, is not Playoff City. <laughs> <laughs> it's not real city. <laughs> oh, I'm going to get some messages about that. Yeah, I don't think many people would mind being in San Diego for the postseason. But I think it has to be a, a given at this point as Pollo. Gets underneath and pops this one to shallow right center. And Bruce Crabb will call him out on, and that will end it. 
So a nice bounce back inning that time for Dylan Covey in his third and final frame. Sends Downs, Wong, and Pueyo in order one, two, three. So that'll do it for us here today. Again, another short one here from Sim City. Dylan Covey with three innings, Robinson Lair an inning, and RJ Alvarez an inning of work on the mound. Well, guys, I think again, the story today, besides from the arrival of Tristan Casas, who has not yet played in a game, we expect that in the coming days. I think the offense, though, starting with the very first pitch, Jaron Duran, that opposite field power. Mike, I'll yeah. start with you. And opposite field approach, and that really worked for a lot of guys here today. Yeah, I thought the, the quality of the bats were terrific, and Josh made a good point. Duran homered on one pitch, we saw it to start things off, but we saw a lot of deep counts today. Guys hit good at bats, going the other way is part of that too, so I was impressed, impressed of the approach, and you know that Rich Gedman down here is as well. Yep, they're grinding, even over a month into this, and you think maybe the monotony would have you lose that focus a little bit in the batter's box, but that's not the case. You're right, good at bats. And another impressive home run from Yairo Munoz. I know you guys are getting tired of me talking about him. Man, opposite field power on display for he, as well as Jaron Duran. So a couple of balls left the yard here this afternoon and only three innings. So a big day for the bats and the offense. You're on a gorgeous Thursday afternoon and another edition of Red Sox Taxi Squad Baseball presented by Bank of America is in the books. Want to thank our entire production team and my broadcast partners, once again, Josh Maurer and Mike Antonellis. I am Jim Kane. We thank you for tuning in, and we say so long from McCoy.